Welcome back. In this video, we are learning how to do the forward and backward pass for a network diagram for PERT problems. So in the last video, this is what we were left with. We actually made our network diagram for a PERT problem. Uh, basically, all we had here is you label the nodes for where activities are completed, and then you put in the most probable, uh, we actually had it up here, the most optimistic, most probable, and most pessimistic time um, under each arrow here for each activity. Now, if you're doing this, uh, if you're doing a problem like this in a university class or something like that, uh, you may either be given uh, a table of dependencies or you may be given a network diagram that's already filled out with this much information already. So what we could do now is what we want to do is we actually need to replace these uh, these numbers here with the most optimistic, probable, and pessimistic durations. We actually have to put that in with expected duration, uh, which we've already calculated here uh, as our mean. If you were curious about where those numbers came from, again, that was from a previous video. Uh, we used these formulas up here. All right. So uh, it, the reason I mention that is because if you're already given this, uh, then the, your biggest challenge will just be making sure that you calculate the, the mean properly and the variance and the standard deviation. So what we need to do is, because we already have this, let's just go ahead, we'll erase this and fill it in with the expected durations for each activity. Then what we also want to do for this problem is we will just add in the variance and the standard deviation above each arrow for each activity, uh, and then we'll be using that in future videos as well. So then now for the forward pass, what we want to do is we want to start at the beginning, and the activity always starts at time zero. And then what we do is similar to the PDM network diagrams or even the CPM network diagrams is we just add the duration here. So we have zero plus 4.5, and we'll get 4.5. Five, right? So this is the early time for the node A complete, and that makes sense because we expect activity A to take 4.5 days, so here we're expecting it to be completed at 4.5 days. Um, now we have 4.5 plus 8.5, we will get 13. And I'm just doing this in green just because, uh, so you'll be able to see which one are the early times and the late times versus everything else, so we don't get confused. All right, so we have 13 plus 9.5, that will give us 22.5. 13 plus 7, that will give us 20. And then we have 22.5 plus 14.5, that could be 37.5, or we could have uh, 20 plus 12.8, that would be 32.8. We have to pick the larger value, just like any other network diagram on the for forward pass. So the, the number 37 here will win. And then we have 37 plus 4, and that will give us 41 for the expected project duration. All right, so we bring this down. 41, just like we were doing in the, the old other types of network diagrams, and now we'll do our backward pass for the late times. We'd have 41 minus 4, well that gives us 37. 37 minus 14.5, that gives us 22.5. 37 minus 12.8, that gives us 24.2. And then here we have to take the smaller value, so we have 24.2 minus 7, or 22.5 minus 9.5, well obviously this one will win, and that will give us a value of 13. And 13 minus 8.5, again, we get 4.5. And then 4.5 minus 4.5, we get 0. So just like any other network diagram, if you end up on a 0 here, you know you've done it correctly. If this isn't a 0, then you have to go back and find your error. So anyways, that is the, that's how you do the forward pass and the backward pass for a PERT network diagram. Uh, some useful information that they gave us, obviously, was uh, visually, visually with the network diagram, we were able to figure out that this project would have an expected duration of 41 days. Uh, and we'll, we'll stop it there for now, and I'll see you in the next video, and we will learn more about expected durations, variances, and standard deviations.